Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, you know that we don't have any music because we filmed this this whole episode about two hours ago, and when we played that music, YouTube threw it off the station and said we couldn't play it because we were breaking copyright infringement. So our, our new theme song for this is now this, and it's in a gothic Davida. I wanted to play the song, the very famous Iron Butterfly song, just, just a little bit of the opening riffs of what is mistakenly known as In a Gada Da Vida, but that doesn't make any sense. No one would ever call a song In a Gada Da Vida. The real lyric is In a Gothic Da Vida. And so I wanted to uh, use that uh, epi that bit of music to restore some sem some semblance of meaning to that song, and I, I can't do it. So that's, 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 that's Iron Butterfly's problem. That's not mine anymore. All I can say is this, this episode is still called In a Gothic Da Vida. I don't think they can do anything about that. And it was inspired, this whole episode got me, was started by our, our we're doing an online, a kind of, uh, a meandering, like everything in it we do at the bathtub, a meandering kind of endless, never, never to end uh, read through of uh, Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. And I've started with Dostoevsky because he's the one I haven't read in the most long time. And I was reading this Joseph Frank biography. I believe I keep forgetting the guy's name. I think it's Joseph Frank. This excellent biography of of Tolstoy of Dostoevsky, which is pronounced Dostoevsky, Dostoevsky for you Russian you Russia files. And they were mentioning the early chapters how much uh, Dostoevsky Dostoevsky loved uh, Anne Anne Radcliffe and Gothic literature. Anne Radcliffe was was part of the kind of the, one of the early developers of what's the gothic novel what's now known as the gothic novel i don't know what they call it then maybe they call it the gothic novel now it's called the gothic novel and anne radcliffe was a very very popular writer in the late late 1700s she was not only loved by uh, dostoevsky but she was also loved by D dickens loved her he was always i think he was always playing riffs off, off radcliffe and it made me made me realize i was as i was reading that biography how much how much uh there is a gothic influence in Dostoevsky, the kind of extreme emotional states and the kind of looming uh, uh, visu visuals and, and this, the, the teetering streets, these expressionistic landscapes that his characters tend to project onto the world and which uh, are kind of the real world that the, uh, Radcliffe's characters go through. So it made me go back to read The Italian, and that was my real reading in the past week or so. I read this, The Italian about two or three days, most gothic novels are really good reads. I, they're really fun. I remember in grad school, I uh, I was had to read all these books and all the literary stuff, and it was, you know, most of it was good. But when I got to the gothics, I didn't know a lot of the gothic literature, and they were great fun. I had a great time. One of the best novels I ever read, as far as just a page turner, is Matthew Lewis's The Monk. This was obviously a huge uh, influence on Dracula and all of Gothic literature that followed it, and it was definitely an influence on the Italian. I don't remember this book really well. This is published in, in the late 1700s, not too, not too, not too far ahead of, uh, of Radcliffe's novels, and he, the guy was in his 20s when he wrote it, and all I remember is it's just hallucinatory. It is uh, this fascinating, kind of dark, macabre there's there's the, the catholic church is in the middle of it in the inquisition and this kind of church which is described in this book as i recall don't if i'm wrong as this nightmare of making deals with satan and they're drinking blood and they're doing horrible things to people not just the inquisition and torturing people but they're just this and the and the monks as the as the the, the head monk of this is is, is they're just evil and the good people are trying to survive in this nightmarish world. The Catholic Church is, seems to be the inspiration for this, this book, as I recall, as, a, as an anti, as a monstrous entity. You know, and and the, the idea that these people are drinking blood, they're drinking blood, which is, the, you know, the idea that they're drinking Jesus Christ's blood in those, in those ceremonies seems to have something to do with it. There's a lot of, a lot of blood drinking imagery in the book. I don't remember the book very well. I just remember I couldn't put it down. Anyway, there was a monk in this, was a monster. The monsters in Gothic novels are often, they're often really connected to the church and the Catholic church, but they're even more so, they're connected to aristocratic, these kind of aristocratic images. You know, they're always counts, Count Dracula, Count Frankenstein. Um, 
the I, the monk. I can't remember the monk, but the bad guy, the bad monk in this, I think his name's Shladoni. Shladoni, I hope. It, it's, he's he's a monk, and the evil mother of the young man in the in this book are both aristocratic families, and they were excessive families, and they and they they're basically kind of it's, they're like. These, these aristocratic characters are coming down from these ruined castles and destroying and, and doing horrible things to peasants and the and the average people on town. Um, it, you see that coming through all the way through Frankenstein, which is the, the one gothic novel, you and Dracula, which you'll all probably remember and can identify with. That these these old old aristocratic families are coming back, and they're going to get back what they was taken away from them. They're all monsters. The, the the Italian, according to the introduction to this, and I'm not going to quote it. I find the introductions to the Oxford series kind of annoying sometimes. But anyway, he the one point that he made that I thought was interesting was that I guess that um, Anne Radcliffe was had, was a successful writer. She wrote a book I was going to show you called The Mysteries of Udolpho. That was her, was her most famous book at the time. I haven't read it. It's a big, big, fat book. I've heard it's a great read, too. And this was kind of a response to the monk. And it's set during the Inquisition, and there's an evil monk and evil families. But the fantastic imagery and the supernatural elements and the satanic elements are, are I don't want to give the book away, but they're either underplayed or not there at all. So there's a, it's a, it's a, there's a, there's a sense that uh, this is a little bit more of a realistic nightmare, but it's all still tied up with the idea that the church is a hideaway for these these aristocratic monsters and they're trying to enact revenges on the past and their own mistakes and they and a, a young couple a young couple who are in love or are damaged by these people they try to destroy them and torture them and kill them the book is really strange so you at the whole first third of the book you 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 think you're seeing supernatural events and you don't know if you are or not they take place on these kind of ruined estates and ruined aristocratic areas and the uh it, it's really absorbent. She writes really good descriptions of of light, natural landscapes, and there's a very romantic notion. Of these kind of, they're always described these kind of sublime, over awesome uh, imagery, which was a big influence on many of the romantics, like uh, Coleridge and Byron. I guess was a big big fan of Radcliffe. And uh, at the same time, there's some image, there's some scenes where, particularly at, at these night scenes where the central characters are going through these dark landscapes and there's guns going off and you see see people coming and going and there's a lot of mysterious characters who keep coming and going and it's really cinematic for a book that's written about 100 years before film was even invented. There's some really, really brilliant visual narrative sections in this. And I really enjoyed it. The last 100 pages, 50, 70, 100 pages, takes a long time kind of exploring what's really been going on. But it all kind of ties together. And I really enjoyed it. It's a great read. Terrific read. So uh, I, I really strongly recommend The Monk. All of these books were big influences on late 19th century, uh, late 19th century, uh, late 18th century. Sorry, I get my centuries all screwed up. Uh, late, late in this whole Gothic adventure, was was a book that I read in grad school, actually an undergrad, and I loved. I couldn't put it down. That's Caleb Williams by William Godwin, and I don't know if it's always associated with the uh, Gothic school, but it should be. It's definitely influenced by the Gothics, and it show it brings out the political nature of this whole antagonism between this kind of aristocratic like figure because he's not an aristocrat, but he's a big, big big monster and he's this young man who's sir who works for him and he tries to destroy him and it and there's a long chase scene in it the whole book is about this guy this guy who's got it's kind of all seeing and chases after this, this this young man and pursues him the ends of the earth it's it's very les miserables like and it's a brilliant book i i, think, I don't th i couldn't really put it down it doesn't have monsters it doesn't have supernatural elements that i recall but it was a huge influence on a lot of books that came later. And the most interesting part to me was always, when you read Caleb Williams, you realize that, uh, you know, she, this is my copy of Frankenstein, it's in this three Gothic novels. His daughter was Mary Shelley. And Mary Shelley was a daughter of William Godwin and Mary Rollstonecraft, the great early feminist uh, writer. Two amazing people. Two of the most interesting people in, in American English uh, history, as far as I'm concerned, in the 18th, 18th century. And uh, the Frankenstein 
she was a very young woman, and she clearly read this book of her father's, and it's a huge, hugely influenced. You have the you can you have the Count Frankenstein, I think, pursued by the monster all through it, and that whole notion of the pursuit, this in, endless pursuit, comes right out of Caleb Williams. They're both, if you like either one of them, they're both good books. Um, another one that kind of comes to mind when I think about Godwin is the American uh, Charles Brockton, <coughs> Brockton Brown, who was one of the first writers in America who tried to become a professional writer and live writing novels. And he was also the very first American novelist who, who's, who failed miserably at making any money at being a writer. He just was a disaster. And he wrote several books that are kind of, well, they're not kind of, they're extremely influenced by by this uh, William Godwin. They sort of have sort of supernatural elements sometimes. Um, the most famous book of his is called Violent. It has to do with a man who can, um, he's got a He's got a Dr. Mabusi type control over people. And this one was my favorite, was Arthur Mervyn, which is is just a really interesting, really twisted, and completely screwed up novel, because it it's kind of falls apart halfway through. But it's a really interesting American version of that Gothic. And of course the Gothic you can see in some other great American writers, like Hawthorne particularly, and then Poe, of course. Um, we, we, I think we talked about Dracula. So Dracula is hugely influenced by all these writers. And it certainly sounds, when I read The Monk, it's it just reminded me so much of Dracula. This is still a great read. If you're looking for something in the bathtub, Dracula. I don't care how many times you saw the movie. This is still a great read. I I remember reading this thinking, oh, I'm not going to enjoy it. About 20 years ago, and I couldn't put it down. A really great narrative. Finally, I wanted to bring in the most recent Gothic novel, which is from our. I've talked a bit about this book, Thomas M. Dish's The Priest, and it's subtitled A Gothic Romance. Now, uh, Tom knew his, his historical genres, and he plays off of both Matthew Lewis's The Monk and the work of, of Radcliffe and the entire tradition of the Gothic novel. And, and it's, it's, it's in, infused with Dish's own hatred of the Catholic Church. Tom hated the Catholic Church. So if you're, if you're most Catholics won't be bothered by this, but if you, if you really don't want to see criticism of the Catholic Church, this is a just taking all these other elements and expanding them. So the evil monster in this is a priest. The Catholic Church in the background has running its own inquisition. This is set in the in late 1990s. Are, are taking girls who have been, who, who are going to abortion, abortion clinics. They kidnap them and force them to have their babies. And then they're molesting kids. All the sort of stuff that kind of comes out about the molestations and these kind of networks of cabals molesting little kids is all just basically blazoned about uh, uh, announced throughout this as most people many people were talking about at the time anyway and dish is playing off all that ridiculousness of this church telling people how to behave properly and doing these horrible things it's a really funny book it's just it's a it's a just a page turner really good complicated plot very funny and it absorbs you it's also one of the few of dish's books where the ending totally worked for me his endings always kind of got lost, I always thought. But his ending on this is just kind of works. And he's a total evil priest. The priest is the most evil person, just like the monk is the most evil person in the book. Um, that's my favorite modern Gothic. It really deserves a lot more attention, and I think you'll really have a good read with it. Got, there's so many great Gothic novelists. I want to read more of them. They're, I want to go back and read The Monk in the Bathtub. And I can't think of anything else to say, except I, uh, I would like to leave with this music so you have to imagine in the Gata Davida, or in a Gothic Davida, as we sign off. And don't forget, if the 2000th episode is coming up, that means you have just a few a few short days to make your, your requests. I'm going to try to reply to every request in our 2000th Bathtub Spectacular episode. And I'm going to try to do whatever you ask, as long as it's within reason, and it doesn't upset Grandma or the kids. I'm going to try to do it. It has to be fairly brief, because i got to... A long laundry list of, of chores so far to, to perform at this this mega mega successful event. All right, stay safe. Don't play anything by Iron Butterfly on your on your YouTube page because you're getting trouble. All right, bye.